Hello, I'm your host, Monique Anderson. Thank you so much for tuning into our webinar today. We are fortunate to have Eduardo Sorto, Application Engineer for Tech30 here today to talk about the Creo Render Studio, and Hamed Yazdi, Business Development Manager for Tech30. I will now hand the reins over to Hamed, who will give you a little background on Tech30. Thank you, Monique. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this webinar. I'm going to give a brief overview of Tech30, what we do, and how we help our customers before we let Eduardo dive in. So our goal at Tech30 is to help our customers solve their most challenging engineering problems by providing the software tools in addition to the engineering services and training and support. Now let's talk a little bit more about what our portfolio is. So as you can see on the, the slide, next slide please, there we go. So the software that we provide is the PTC suite of software offering that includes CAD, PLM, augmented reality, MathCAD, as well as technical publications. And we have the names of all the software up there. In addition to that, we also have hardware. Uh, specifically, we have an entire division focused on 3D printers. And uh, our, really, our real focus within that realm, uh, we rep five different brands of 3D printers, and we focus on functional industrial use cases. We also have laptops that we sell, and we also rent out for training purposes. Um, now let's talk about the services organization at Tech30. Our services, um, uh, the biggest one is PLM deployments. So whether it's configurations, customizations, installation, training, uh, and we have experts in PLM for both Windchill and Team Center. Uh, training, we have training opportunities as well as not just for PTC software, Siemens software, SolidWorks, uh, you know, various different types of software that we can provide training on. Uh, analysis, we can do FEA, whether it's linear or nonlinear, uh, computational fluid dynamics, um, whatever it is that you need. We have a team of experts in our engineering department, over 50 engineers in the company. Our goal is to become your trusted advisor and essentially seen as an extension of your engineering team. Chances are if you need something that's either outside of your expertise or you just need more bandwidth, we either have in-house expert, experts that can help out or our trusted network of partners that we've been working with in the industry. So please don't hesitate to reach out. We would love to become your trusted partner on your engineering side. So what I'm going to do now is pass it over to Eduardo, and we're going to talk about the Creo Render Studio and go over how you can take advantage of this powerful extension powered by Keyshot technology. Thank you, Hamid. And hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. So today I'm going to cover um, the Creo Render Studio extension and or application. So as you can see, I'm going to introduce the product, uh, show a brief overview of what it has to offer, touch on some of the key capabilities and features within the extension, talk about some of the opportunities and value case for having this extension with your modeling tool, whether it be Creo or another tool. And then I'll go over a demo, which will walk you through a workflow process of how you can, how can, you can start designing and then moving to creating high quality images of your, your products. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Creo Render Studio. So its main functionality is to support the need for a fast and accurate creation of high quality photorealistic images. So these images can be used for a wide variety of use cases. Some of them include uh, the need to produce some realistic interpretations of how a product will be seen in a real environment, whether that be for um, displaying during design reviews or for creating marketing content. So again, this is available as an extension to your Creo Parametric um, tool or as a standalone product. So you're able to bring in not only Creo files, but also step files and other, other file formats. Okay, so the Render Studio provides a powerful rendering functionality. It provides an easy, uh, easy tool for users to generate stunning photo, photorealistic product images without having to, without having much experience on creating renderings themselves. So there's four key needs for creating great um, images and those needs have to be supplied by your rendering tool. So those are having um, advanced appearance libraries, libraries, default render scenes and customizable environments, real-time ray tracing, and some integration with your modeling tool. 
So Creo offers an advanced appearance library that gives you a variety of options to choose from and is also configurable to meet your needs. So it's easily edit easy to edit, easy to apply, and easy to, to configure. So some of the um, some of the needs that you would need, that will require from the rendering tool is is to create common materials and apply common materials such as plastics, metals, glass, paint, wood, rubber, and liquid. And these are easy to find, easy to edit, and apply. And a great thing about this tool is that it has real-time rendering, so it dynamically updates your model to show the material change whenever you do apply these changes. And an important part to this also is that it provides immediate visual feedback. It's important to receive this feedback so you can better set up your rendering environment and your appearance definition. Okay, so in addition to appearances, an engineer must be able to simulate real-world environments. They have to provide scenes that are easily selected, easily applied, and you can have a suite of different scenes and um, environments within Creo. It's represented as an HDR image, which you can bring in towards your, your rendering environment, or you can just select from the, the options that are available. So again, this gives you a lot of control on how your images and your environment can be seen. It gives you control over the lighting, the background, the shadowing, and the illumination of the product. Okay, and as I mentioned, there, in order to produce these high quality images, there has to be a reliable and well-known engine to support um, rendering, right? And PTC partnered with Luxion, Keyshot, and we now are able to use real ray tracing from their engine that provides um, different lighting presets for us and it improves the shadow quality and the overall lighting quality of the product. So this is very important to have. Not every um, rendering tool has, has this. And knowing um, Keyshot's background, we can be confident on, have confidence in our, our images. Okay, so another need for a rendering tool is the integration with your modeling environment. So because um, the Render Studio is an extension of Creo, we're able to just jump back and forth between the application of Creo, and so you'll see the design changes from there, and then you're able to produce those high quality images from that. So as you can see here, it's displaying the rendering extension paired up with the design exploration extension. So you can create different iterations of your design and at the same time, go ahead and create renders of those. So you can pair those up and then properly display how these different design changes would be interpreted in your um, real life scenario. Okay, and without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the demo and basically give a workflow of how this is gonna be displayed. Okay, so here we have some headphones just brought into the Creo environment. And from there, I'm gonna jump into the, the application. So we can either open this view from the Creo's um, extension or as a standalone product. So we go to applications here. Open up the Render Studio. Okay, you can see that it automatically um, starts the real-time rendering. And a great thing about Creo is that it provides an easy, easy environment for a user to um, view the process of how this is done. So as you can see, this is separated into four different categories or three different categories, the project, the real-time rendering, and the output settings. So if we turn this off for a second, we can see how um, the difference between the real-time rendering and the modeling environment. So important, an important thing to note for this is the setup of your render. It's very important to have a good workflow and not jump back and forth. So 
first let's jump back into the real-time rendering here and let's explore the scenes, the options of what we have to edit the scenes here. So it's usually best practice to set up your scene and environment and then move to applying your appearances. All right, so if we open the scene here, we can see that there's a bunch of different options already default with Creo. We can select them and it'll bring it right in. All right, or you can just um, bring in your own. So if we open up the edit scene dialog box here. And as we wait for that to load, you can see that the real-time rendering tool is creating um, the engine is creating small pixels of it, so it's rendering in real time, and this can be configured um, depending on how you want your the performance of this, this extension. Let's try this again. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, there's already a gallery um, of default scenes. We go to environment here. You can see that we're able to change the environment through an HDR image. In this image, you can either bring it up through another library of Creo, or you can, there it is. Looks like it's on a different screen. So you can bring in a different HDR image that's already within the common files of Creo, or you can download your own and customize that. So in order to set up your environment here, you want to go ahead and change the intensity. This is basically how bright your HDR image is going to be reflected onto your product. So if we change this to uh, a little bit higher, you'll see the difference. One second while we close this. There it is. All right, so you'll see how it basically makes the whole brighter. Let's reduce that to our needs. So yes, the first step is going to be moving from the environment settings to the light settings. So for this case, let's go ahead and um, change the floor plane so we can see exactly where this um, is going to be outlined. Let's change this to maybe Z here. And we can see that the, our reflection is now shown at the bottom. So we change our plane here. We're able to see the shadow, see the reflection. And let's take the reflection off here. And another thing we want to do is edit the lights. We're able to add different types of light, distant lights, spotlight, and a uh, light bulb. All right, so let's go ahead and add a distant light to see how the, that would change. Our image. Let's point that to the model. Move that a little bit further back. Right. Bring that in. Let's lock this to the model. And it's important to lock it to the model because if you want to pan and move this, uh, your light is going to be moved. Um, is it going to change? It's going to just stick to the model and it's easier to control that way. Change the intensity to 1.5, just to give a little bit more depth. The smoothie environment give a little bit more uh, more light. So we can rotate the environment. So this is the overall image of the scene. So right now we move it towards darker side and then towards the lighter side. That should be good. Okay. Right, and then the background option also allows you to import images, or if you just want to select a color background, you can do so as well. Okay, so after you set up your scene, the best way to go about this is to create your view orientation. So you won't be moving this around back and forth. You have a base to go back to. And to do that, you'll go to the view manager on the top here and select new right and this will capture the current view that you're in as a new view so we'll just say render view here makes that one there you go 
and we'll apply. Uh, yeah, so it should have applied. Okay. okay, so after you have your, your view set up, the next thing you want to do is go to your appearances and set that up. So Creo offers a bunch of different default um, materials, default appearances that you can use. And if we explore the appearance manager, it gives you a suite of different options. So in this case, let's say we want to change the color of this headpiece right here. What we would do is create a new appearance, right? Change a class, change a subclass. In this case, let's choose met, um, paint and make it metallic paint. We'll change the base color from gray to uh, darker blue, a tech dirty blue. And from there, we can go ahead and edit this as well as much as we want. We'll add some reflectivity to it because it is a headset. And then once we have selected or created our appearance, we can select that and apply that to your headset. So an important thing to know is that when you're applying your color or your appearance, you can select different options. So you can select the surface or the headset or this component itself. All right, for example, if I didn't want to select the whole thing, I can come here at the bottom and choose surface, right? And just um, choose to select and apply to that surface here. Click this again, and then we can see that it applied to just that, that surface, or we can go to all and then apply the appearance that way. All right, go ahead and do that one more time. From this, okay, and okay. All right, Let's make sure all, all of it is selected. And not selected. So, what we can do is go back to our feature here, click our appearance, click our feature. Our paints once again, and yeah, so that looks like it wasn't applying. Let's uh, move forward and then get back to this. Another another thing I wanted to show was the was the materials section we have here. So as you can see, it's already Chrome set up, and you can apply that to your your model. So once we select this from here, if we have an option up here, we'll click that. We'll click this piece here. Click the other side as well. And click one more time. All right. Another cool thing that um, this extension has is the ability to copy and paste appearances as well. So we select here. This is your copy tool. All right, so we notice that this flag is different from this flag. We can copy this one here. It saves it automatically. And now you, your, um, your mouse has changed to a brush, so you're able to apply that. And we'll apply it to this one as well. Select OK. And that changed. So instead of trying to figure out what the different um, color scheme is and trying to recreate that, you can copy and paste something that was already created, perhaps by a different different user. Okay, so let's go ahead and create another appearance just to make this look a little bit better. Let's do another one. Create a darker blue. Okay. And let's apply that to a body here. Okay, so another key thing to know is the selection process Creo has. We're able to select different types of surfaces by right clicking the mouse. So if you just want to highlight this component or another, you just right click through all the different features. So we'll go ahead and select this one as an appearance. 
apply it to here and here by clicking control to the other side as well selecting that and then selecting that again it's okay let's see looks like it's not grabbing this appearance it's okay we can go here and edit an appearance too so for example if this wasn't grabbing it we can go ahead and edit a model appearance select one that was already um, created or you can select it on the model itself click here and it grabs it already right so we can go ahead and edit this from there right okay so once that's um, done you have your appearance set um, you can also bring in different textures. So, for example, we want to make this top of the headband a uh, uh, carbon fiber texture. We're also able to bring that in. We'll go back to our appearance manager. Let's create a new appearance. Um, right here, go to texture, select image, and then choose from different um, images that they have already with it. Or you can bring in your own as well. So these images are just JPEG files or PNG files that you can use. For example, we said we want to do carbon fiber. So I can do that. Open, create our appearance here as a texture. Close that. Bring that in here. Select the top and apply. All right. Let me go ahead and edit this one just so it can match. Let's copy this here and paste this one entirely. Do that one more time. This time by editing the model itself. something similar or we can do it black see how that looks okay and once you have your setup complete here you can choose different options of how the rendering is occurring during the real time as a live right here so there's um oh, looks like it's in a different window but it has um, different options configured to how the performance of Creo is going to be um, exported. For example, if we want to create a render for different resolution types, we'll go ahead and click this render icon here. Looks like everything's showing on a different dashboard. Right, so let's go ahead and render. So here it started rendering and it occurred pretty quickly because of the settings that it was configured to. It was configured to some um, some pretty low resolution images. So once you increase that, you'll also increase the the CPU time required to create these renders. So let's see if we can get an output log we can analyze. Uh, yeah, it looks like everything's populating on a different screen, so you're unable to see it. But yeah, so it's starting to render again. And this time it took a little bit longer. And depending on how you want your setup to be, it can take anywhere from an hour to, to two hours. But it'll create higher quality images uh, the longer it takes. And the more sample, samples you, you choose to configure it to. Right. And if we jump back to our um, modeling environment, we'll see that we can edit our model and then create different rendering types 
and then with the design exploration tool, we can have different iterations again and create different renders. Yeah, let's stop this render here. And when you go back to the presentation, just to conclude. So for the demo, I wanted to stress the workflow of creating uh, rendering. Unfortunately, some of the dialog boxes were populating on a uh, different screen. But it's basically setting up your environment first, setting up your lights, and then constructing an orientation you can refer back to, right? So every time it moves, you would go back to your space orientation. Once that's done, you can create your appearances. It gives you, Creo gives you a supply of default libraries of materials, of different um, material types, subclasses that you can choose from. You can create your own. You can bring your own from downloaded already or already configured from from another user, right? You can copy and paste these appearances, and then you can change the, the settings of your renders. And from that, you can also export to um, export different file types and export to Keyshot as well. So you can bring in your your images and your settings to Keyshot and then edit from there as well. Yeah, so that, that was a brief overview of the capabilities and features, the settings you can choose. Uh, I showed you how to rapidly create um, your rendering and propose the value of having this extension with your Creole tool so you can view different design iterations as you, as you create your product. So now I'm gonna open it to questions. Awesome, thank you, Eduardo. We did get a question in from our audience. John asked, would the custom texture be saved with the Creo file, or would we have to import the image when we relaunch Creo? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So the texture image will be saved to your Creo file, and there's a config pro setting, which um, is an option that says save texture with file. And if you set that to yes, You'll be able to save it, and every time you open Creo and open this file itself, your texture will will open as well. Excellent! Thank you so much, Eduardo. Great presentation today. And to our attendees, we will be posting this video to YouTube later today. Feel free to pass along to your friends and colleagues, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn to get information regarding upcoming webinar dates and topics. And if you wouldn't mind, please stick around for just 10-15 seconds after the webcast ends to fill out a short survey. Let us know how we did, what you liked. We really appreciate your feedback, everyone. Thank you again so much for taking time out of your day to attend and have a great rest of your day.